Each of us knows what Ireland is. Such a country lying in a certain island, in fact not even covering the whole island. However, today we're not talking about geography but about growth. Specifically, GDP growth, which in this country has been huge for years, even double digit. But let's not get too excited. All that GDP or GDP per capita in this case is worse, as much as the worse of insert anyone like Putin. And in this material we will explain to you why. Ireland alone has been the unquestionable EU leader in GDP growth for many years. In the crisis year of 2020, when all other EU economies experienced a recession, the island's GDP growth remained high. And when it comes to 2020 and 2021, Ireland's GDP grew by more than 20%. In comparison, Estonia, which was second on the list, performed three times worse. If we consider the broader period of time, Ireland's GDP has doubled throughout the decade. A truly impressive result, but this is where it gets tricky. Many economists simply exclude Ireland in their compilations. There is a valid point of view that Ireland's GDP does not reflect the standard of living of its citizens. Let's start with the tax system. Ireland has shaped it to be as friendly as possible to large cross-border corporations. Effective taxation is only a few percent, making it the place where non-EU companies locate their head offices. In this way, Ireland makes for an aircraft carrier for foreign corporations. Ireland is listed alongside Bermuda and Switzerland as one of the largest tax havens. For these multinational corporations to not remain nameless, let's name a few. Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, Twitter, PayPal and Intel. Yes. They all have their European main offices right there. It's mainly the earns from the intellectual property of these corporations that makes Ireland GDP grow so much. In this way we can say that revenue gathered from all over Europe is transferred to Ireland, where companies pay very little or no taxes. So basically Ireland is simply robbing other countries of their taxes. But we should focus on what is the most important. Are the Irish rich? Companies pay losing taxes, as we have already noted, but this does not mean a complete lack of benefits for the people of the country itself. Corporations leave billions in its budget. Nevertheless, GDP indicator is worthless here. Let's look at the per capita consumption. Here, Ireland performs really poorly, even compared to countries with a lower GDP than itself. Consumption in Ireland is only 90% of the EU average. Higher consumption was recorded in countries such as Italy and Lithuania. By comparison, consumption in Poland is 84%. That is, not so much less. We are comparable to Czechs or Spanish. We can also look at the comparison of consumption to GDP per capita. In the case of the GDP per capita, two countries stand out significantly. Luxembourg and, of course, Ireland. I won't surprise you if I said that both of these countries are considered tax havens with unreliable GDP levels. Important thing, this is one of the reasons for criticism of GDP as an indicator of wealth. Looking at GDP alone, most of the world's richest countries are tax havens or have economies based on the extraction of raw materials such as oil, for example. So on paper, we have a lot of wealth, while there is not so much in the wallets of citizens. It gets even more interesting when we consider GDP growth in individual EU regions. The thousand part of Ireland grew at alarmingly fast rate between 2001 and 2016. I wonder why? Well, because this area includes Dublin. To be precise, it's where companies from states register. Now it's time for wages. The share of wages in GDP in Ireland is significantly lower than that in the EU. It is literally at the grey end of the list. In front of it, there are countries like Greece, Italy and Poland, which have this index so low due to high levels of self-employment, among other things. Ireland, on the other hand, does not have this problem, so this shows how the GDP level here is disconnected from reality. Let's go back to taxes. Looking at the state budget, we can already see how low they are. Revenues from them account for one-fifth of Ireland's GDP. This is the lowest result in the European Union. It is worth noting that a low share of taxes in GDP usually characterizes poor countries. 
We can also note that the higher the share of taxes in GDP is, the more developed the country is. Here we can cite France, Denmark and Norway. Of course, tax havens distort this ratio as well. We as Poland are somewhere below the EU average, despite the fact that since 2016 taxes in our country grew the fastest in the Union. But that is a topic for another material, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And finally, the most interesting issue of all wages. If the Irish were as rich as their GDP suggests, they would be the richest nations in the Europe. Meanwhile, as recently as in 2018, the average early wage expressed in purchasing power of money was lower than in Austria, Finland, the Netherlands, Sweden, Luxembourg, Belgium, Germany and Denmark. It must be admitted, however, that such a growth strategy does not entirely lack merit. Ireland benefits from the presence of cross-border corporations. In addition to paying taxes, they also employ a lot of very skilled professionals. IT specialists in the country have the chance to work with the world's largest companies, and this is associated with good salaries, which they spend on the island, which increases consumption and, as a result, domestic production. Summarizing the material, we must remember that Ireland's GDP in practice has nothing to do with the real development of the country, therefore its reading should be taken with caution. Which is why Ireland is regularly excluded from many compilations of GDP. Thank you for your attention and see our other materials.